not necessarily express the views and opinions of the management of 58 WCHS or West Virginia Radio Corporation. It's 11 minutes past 9 o'clock. Good Friday morning to you. Congratulations. You made it to the weekend. You're listening to 58 WCHS, the voice of Charleston. This is Ask the Expert. And we are very, very pleased this morning to have expert with us, Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey. Good morning, Dr. Bailey. How are you doing? I'm great. And how are you today? I'm doing very well. Appreciate you coming in with us this morning. Has it really been... I think the last time we talked was when you were at the West Virginia State Fair. Yes, and that was so much fun. I had a blast. You did a great job. You could really kind of moonlight as an embedded reporter, I think, because you did a great job kind of reporting on the events there, what was going on, what you were involved in. It really made me kind of want to hop in the car and drive down there right away because I had missed it this year. Oh, it was so much fun. The, the lines were long for the Cinnabon, so. <laughs> I remember that. But, you know, when, when you're in those situations, I know when they had the 150 celebration at the Capitol, some of the vendor lines there for uh, some of the delicious pastries were out of this out of this world long. They, I, my poor mom, I think, waited for about an hour and a half for a uh, bear claw or something just to get that. <laughs> That's wanting it pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, she wanted to take it back to her sister, who was who was a couple hours away. So it, it made sense, but uh, sometimes those lines can get awful long. But how have you been doing? Everything going well? Oh, everything is good. We've been working at the high school. This has been Spirit Week at Hurricane High School, and tonight they play Princeton. So it's our homecoming, and my children dressed up, and they wore cowboy outfits and period pieces. And so it's been a lot of fun with the children at the high school this week. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, period pieces. So is that kind of the theme of homecoming? They're, they're dressing in... Um like of any period or of 20s or 1800s or is it kind of their choice well every day there's a different theme like one day my daughter she was janice joplin so (laughs) we had to find all the attire which you know i do have stuff that fit that time period (laughs) that tells my age but you know and then yesterday was cowboy day so they had to dress up in their western wear so it was a a lot of fun getting the kids dressed and ready for that that's something that i miss about school is when you had those spirit weeks those were fun a lot of the time Mm -hmm. Uh, i went to Capital, and uh, we were just beginning when I started there. It was the the first year that Capital was was open as a school. But uh, once that this it kind of kicked in, it's always one of the best things about high school. I think it's a it's a good time. It's a fun time. This morning, I know that one of the things that we wanted to talk about we, we we're still going to talk about the things that we always talk about. But we're going to approach it from the perspective of everybody has bad habits. You know, I know I have bad habits. You gave me a little cheat sheet this morning, and I was I was kind of going through some of the things. And I have to say, although I may not fit within a patient perspective, I have a lot of these bad habits, so I don't know. It makes me kind of question myself sometimes. Um, When we're talking about bad habits, uh, what are some of the, the bad habits you look out for that can affect the patient's health? Yes, and today, you know, I just like to talk about habits and how it does affect your health. And I'd kind of like to review things like chewing ice or biting candy. Or some people, they actually bite their fingernails or their cheek. Those are cheek biters. Those are very bad habits. And clenching and grinding, uh, that's kind of a habit, and it's not. So I want to talk about that. And then I want to talk about ergonomics. 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 I can't wait till we get to that. Okay. And smoking and alcohol. And there's all kinds of habits that are not good for your health. And, of course, since I practiced TMJ dysfunction and sleep, I have to roll it into TMJ dysfunction in my area of, you know, special interest. That makes a lot of sense. If you have any questions as we're having this conversation this morning, you can give us a call. It's 345-5858, 345-5858. You can also find Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey online at wvsmileartist.com. That's wvsmileartist.com. You're talking about uh, uh, chewing your cheek and chewing your fingernails and uh, ice. Does that also carry over to folks that habitually chew on their pen, pen tops and stuff like that? Yes. It Definitely. does. Yes. I know that uh, when I was younger, I don't do it so much anymore, uh, partly because I think it's gross <laughs> because you never know where the pens have been. But when I was younger and in school and didn't have such thoughts, I was constantly chewing on pens. Every pen that I had in my uh, my book bag, the top of it would look like it was just flattened and chewed and chewed to death. I, I did it quite a bit. But that's, that is something else that you look out for. What is uh, what's the reason that some people do things like that? Like if they're they're crunching on ice, their pen tops or something along those lines. Well, there's a couple of different reasons. From a health standpoint, it's important for me to be looking at this. Like there's a nervous type of personality. You know, you were a little bit nervous. That became your habit chewing on pens. Some people chew on ice. 
Um, I went to a conference one time, and I sat beside, which at the time I didn't know the guy was famous. Uh, I sat beside this guy, and he was chewing on ice and the hard candy. And I was really mad because I paid a lot of money to take the course, and I was there to learn. But I couldn't concentrate for this doctor beside me eating his ice and candy. And I looked at him, and I said, dude... I paid a lot of money to get here. I want to learn, but you're killing me. Quit it or move. (laughs) One of us has to move. So after that, this fellow and I, we became very good friends. He said, geez, Dr. Bailey, I'm chewing on ice and candy because I'm going through a bad divorce. And my wife is taking everything I own. And he says, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. So he was chewing on the ice and chewing on the candy. And I was like, okay, after I understood... You know, then that made sense. But for him, it was nerves. Nerves really can. And you're right. As a as a child, I was a lot more nervous than I than I am now. I had a more nervous disposition. Now I'm kind of laid back. You know, those uh, very few things bother me. And I was also I was just remembering as you were telling that story. I was also an ice chewer. You know, I whenever I would drink soft drinks or anything. I would drink them real quick, get to the ice, and I would just chomp away on that. And you know what made me stop? And it's funny you told that story in a way. Um, I was actually sitting beside somebody at a movie theater, at a crowded movie theater. They weren't with me that was chomping their ice very loudly. And I was like, wow, that's kind of annoying. And I always thought about that going forward. I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. If I'm sitting beside somebody, it's likely to, uh, to bother them. Why is it important to identify um, a habit such as that? Well, ice chewing or chewing on other things is sometimes a red flag for me as to something else going wrong. You know, in the fact that I'm treating sleep and TMJ patients, when people chew on ice, sometimes that's an indication of an iron deficiency. You know? Really? So, so is it something that could actually be treated somewhat by, by supplementing your iron? Yes, it is. And, you know, you do a blood test. I send them to a physician. And they actually, when they have an iron deficiency, have to have some kind of supplementation. They measure the ferritin blood level to see, you know, if that is a key role that's playing a part of this health issue. That's, uh, I, I never would have guessed that that was the case. Of course, I guess that's why you're the doctor and I'm not, but, but I, never, I never would have guessed that. And, and I have to admit, uh, I don't want to sound like, uh, I don't want to feign uh, more knowledge than I actually have when, when, uh, you were kind of giving me the, uh, the, the cheat sheet for this morning that uh, uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about a little bit was restless leg syndrome. And so uh, I, wanted, I wanted to bring that up to you. Uh, what is restless leg syndrome? This, I have kind of a personal tie to this, but what is restless leg syndrome exactly? Well, it's actually a neurological condition, and it's very tied to sleep apnea. I but it also. Oh, yeah. 10% of the people have restless leg syndrome, and it's where parts of the body move. These people have creepy, crawly, or unusual sensations. So in order to help shut that sensation, which is unpleasant, off, um, they move. And many of them do it in their sleep. So their legs are moving, their arms are moving, their head's moving. So parts of their body, they're in constant motion. Yeah, and the reason that, that it, it, um, it kind of pulled my memory a little bit, I had an employee at a company that I worked for a few years ago. Um, she, was a, she was an intern at a local college. Um, it was when I was in Michigan, so it was an intern from uh, MSU, from Michigan State. Young girl, healthy. She was a dancer. I mean, you wouldn't think uh, uh, with her lifestyle that, that she had any you know, major physical problems or anything, but she had terrible restless leg syndrome where it was so bad when she was sitting down, she would have her hand on her knee and her her leg would be bouncing so much that her work pants, a lot of times she would wear holes in the knees of them just where her her hand was there all the time. It was constantly bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And it would move around a lot sometimes too. Like um, uh, it kind of would manifest itself in rubbing her ear or uh, rubbing the side of her face or something. It was really um, kind of disturbing to see a little bit uh, because she couldn't control it. You know, it was something that was always happening with her. And um, I do think that she, it was tied into some other disorder. Eventually they they found out that, you know, there were several levels that of problems that she had and she was taking some medicine to get through it, but that could be a debilitating disorder to some degree. Yes. And you know, when we look at our patients, I'm always asking about special habits. Ice chewing is indication of iron deficiency and they have restless leg. So in some treatments for restless leg, they supplement the iron and that works on shutting off the restless leg or this funny motion that they have going on. It's during the day, during the night. So it is an iron deficiency in some cases or they do treat it with dopamine, you know, which kind of shuts it off. 
it's amazing that things like that, it, it often just comes down to proper diagnosis to, to, for somebody knowing what to look out for and knowing how to treat it. Um, because I think this poor girl went through this for a, a large portion of her life until she was in her early 20s, I guess, when she finally started getting treated with it. But she had lived with it her entire life. And I think that's probably from misdiagnosis or, or um, not realizing it could be a severe issue that she had. You know, and sometimes I think being a, a physician or a dentist who actually takes the time to listen to the patient, because when I sit down and speak with my patients for the first hour, and my consultations are usually a first hour is, you know, my time to listen and see if I can pick up these things. You know, I may be able to treat the sleep apnea. I may be able to treat the TMJ. But if I can give little helpful hints on these bad habits, how to make it better, you know, it's a matter of listening sometimes. And in today's medical arena, it's hard to budget your time to listen to people. You know, you go to the physician, you go in, they write a prescription, and you're out. I, you know, the, what, you, what you bring up there is so true because I've run into that situation before when I've seen a doctor, and uh, it just depends on, you know, who you have a good relationship with. Obviously, sometimes a doctor-patient relationship starts as basic as if you just get along. And, but when you talk about listening and being able to, to identify certain problems, I think that uh, that – that's probably the number one thing in your tool bag as a doctor, that if you're listening and you're, and you're keeping your mind open to what the problems could be, it could help you treating it. With the, with the uh, restless leg syndrome, is that something where it affects, are they also moving their jaw and so forth as well? Yes, and that's a really big thing for me to key in on because um, when I talked about the head moving, the head's part of it, and the jaw is constantly moving. So people who clench and grind their teeth, that's a red flag to other problems health-wise. And, you know, it's not always habitual in that. It is habitual, but, you know, not a voluntary habitual habit. But when you're gritting and grinding your teeth, that's an indication of sleep apnea. So I have to watch that. And then you have multiple fronts that you have to, to look at. You, somebody that's grinding their teeth is also causing some deterioration, I, I'm guessing, of their, of their teeth. And it could be a side effect of the, of the sleep apnea. So it, I guess there's different, uh, different things that you need to look out for from that. Sure. You know, if you're breaking your teeth, you know, you may, in most cases, want to say you don't need to do this. But, you know, it keeps the dentist in business, actually. Because they're repairing the broken tooth. <laughs> that makes sense. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, or a lot more about this, after the break. If you have any questions for us, you can give us a call. Our number here is 345-5858. That's 345-5858. Dr. Gina K. Bailey is our expert this morning on Ask the Expert on WCHS. You can find them online. You can find Dr. Bailey online at wvsmileartist.com. That's wvsmileartist.com. And also the phone number is 304 757 7428. We're going to go ahead and take our first break and be back right after this on WCHS, the voice of Charleston. Droid, iPhone, Blackberry, your smartphone is incomplete without WCHS. Download our free app today at 58WCHS.com. Is your current auto glass company saving you $100 on your insurance deductible? Are you using Novus's friend and family program? I'm Chet Roberts of Novus Auto Glass in Canal City. Novus is waiving up to $100 on all insurance windshield replacements. Refer a friend or family member to Novus for a windshield replacement and Novus will donate $20 for an insurance claim or $10 for a cash job to your favorite high school sports program, your favorite charity, or back to you for your referral. Call Novus Auto Glass today where you save and everyone wins. Trojan Landing and Chaparral say, forget the calendar. If you've checked a great number of boats on the river, summer is still here. Families are getting out on the water, and you can too. Because Trojan Landing is closing out the remainder of the 2013 Chaparral line. The 2014s are arriving, and there's still time. Time for family fun on the river, so don't miss out. Trojan Landing, McCorkle Avenue at the Patrick Street Bridge in Charleston. At Pew Furniture, our summer clearance is going strong, and we've come up with more great deals than ever, like a larger selection and new lower prices on our solid wood heirloom quality furniture from our Amish craftsmen. New truckloads of sofas, sectional sofas, reclining sofas, and sleeper sofas. And they're ready to find a new home, like yours. A major manufacturer closed its doors, so all in stock solid wood TV stands and bookcases are being liquidated. We're offering extra discounts on the entire line 
equivalent of Serta Eye Comfort and Serta Perfect Sleeper mattress sets. So all you have to do is pick out the mattress set that's right for you. And while you're at it, try out one of the new models from our Almost Heaven collection of mattresses made right here in West Virginia. In our Loading Dock Deals and Steals, a three-drawer changing chest for $129.97. It's more than 200 bucks in online stores. All this and more at Pew Furniture Warehouse Showrooms in Charleston's Furniture District, 1320 Smith Street. All prices met at pewfurniture.net. How wonderful would it be if everyone could get to a better state? State Farm, the nation's number one choice for car insurance, will help you do just that. You'll get the right coverage, fast, friendly claim service, and all the discounts you deserve. You'll save an average of $480 on your premium a year. Call State Farm agent Faye Zinn in South Charleston or Brett Kelly in Charleston. Let them help you save money. Get to a better state. Average annual per household savings based on 2010 National Survey of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. Life special moments, weddings, babies, birthdays. We celebrate by getting together, sharing joy, giving gifts. But what to give? They're adorable. Vera Bradley's newest baby items have arrived at Eggplant. As cute as can be, these new Vera Bradley colors and styles are perfect for celebrating baby's arrival. Stop in Eggplant and see them today. Eggplant in Bridge Road Shops. Open Sundays. Making your life moments anything but ordinary. Innovative technology and marketing meet quality service and integrity. Real Estate Central brings fresh ideas and a vast knowledge together to get the results you need. Whether you're buying your first home, selling in an uncertain market, or want to add to your commercial real estate portfolio, the seasoned professional realtors at Real Estate Central have a new approach that benefits buyers and sellers. Visit realestatecentral.biz today to learn more. Real people, real results. Real Estate at realestatecentral.biz. Coming up on 20 mi- 29 minutes past the hour, you're listening to WCHS, the voice of Charleston. This is Dale Cooper on Ask the Expert. Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey is our expert this morning. You can get a hold of Dr. Bailey at her office at 757-7428. That's 304-757-7428. And the website is wvsmileartist.com, wvsmileartist.com. Our number here, of course, is 345-5858. That's 345-5858 if you have any questions for us. We're talking about some of the bad habits that you have and, and how Dr. Bailey uses those to to help determine uh, different issues like uh, TMJ and like sleep apnea. It turns out that a lot of these are interrelated and they're kind of linked and you can you can follow a path of symptoms and of uh, and of um, fact finding to, to come up with uh, some ideas of what may be wrong with somebody. Um, we were talking about ice crunching and chewing and things like that before. And you did say that those are, um, those are habitual. Those are a habit, right? Yes, it is a habit. And is it a habit that, um, is it a habit you can break or does it have to be treated? Uh, for me, I don't know if maybe I just started eating better as I got older and I didn't do it anymore or I lost my nervous disposition. Uh, is it something that you can kick later on in life? Sometimes, yes. But, you know, many people don't know that they're doing this. You know, people who chew the ice like the fellow that was beside me he says is it really that bad and I went you're a dentist you ought to know you're driving me nuts <laughs> but he didn't know or the person in the movie theater they probably didn't know that crunching and chewing was disturbing everybody around them so just pointing it out you know really sometimes brings people in or if they clench or grind you know I have to say you have to try to break the habit if not then I intervene and I help what are some of the ways that you can, uh, other than be, is there anything other than, you know, trying um, supplements like for iron or something like that? Is there any other ways that you can try to help break that habit? Well, in some cases where people bite their nails or they chew on their cheek or they grit and grind their teeth, I make a protective mouth guard. Okay. So if they chew up my mouth guard, it's protecting their teeth. So that's one of the ways, as a dentist, I help people break the habit. And, you know, my grandmother, when um, my uh, my sister had some problems with chewing her nails when we were growing up, and my grandmother would rub pepper oil on them <laughs> to try to keep her from sticking her fingers in her mouth. Probably not the most recommended method to use anymore, I would imagine. 
you know, I have some children who do this or like the sucking the thumb or whatever. And you wear gloves when you go to bed and some parents have to tape the gloves on to break the habit. Is the uh, is the sucking the thumb into a adult ages, is that something that's also from a uh, nervous dip- disposition of some kind or does that lead you to any other uh, um does that lead you to any other conclusions if somebody still does that as an adult? Well, there's lots of reasons people suck their thumb. We used to think it was a big habitual thing. But actually, if you put pressure on the upper palate, you're actually moving the bones out. And sometimes the body, it wants to protect itself. So you're actually moving bones. And sometimes that's in a good way. Now, I would have never have guessed that. So we're talking if you, if you stick your, it could be that if somebody's sticking their thumb in their mouth or their fingers in any way and they're applying pressure to the roof of their mouth, then they're actually kind of self-treating. Even if it's not, even if it's subconsciously, they're trying to help alleviate some sort of pressure or some kind of issue that they're having with the configuration of the bone structure in their head. Absolutely. Wow, that's, I would have never guessed. Is that, is that generally lead to something like uh, uh, TMJ, or is there other things that it could be as well? Well, it doesn't lead to things like TMJ or, until later on, because when your teeth don't match properly together, uh, your bite's bad. That's the terminology we'll use. Uh, and when the bite's bad, sometimes you get grinding, because if the body can't find a good, happy position, it will try and grind a good, happy position. You know, and a wonderful example of this, there's two kinds of people who grit and grind their teeth. Sometimes it's habitual. Um, They don't really want to do it. Uh, Some people do it and don't know they're doing it. Now, my husband, he's a perfect example of this. You know, I call him the weight lifter. If his (laughs) mind works, his jaw has to go with it. If he's really concentrating, and he, poor thing, he can't help it. So I always say, honey, your masseters are moving. That's the weight lifting muscle for the bottom jaw. So you can see these people, the little muscle on the side of their cheeks, they bulge in, they bulge out. So I just call him my little weight lifter. (laughs) And I'm, I think that I'm like that um, during stressful situations. Like if I literally, when you say you have to bear down and do something, a lot of times I think I do that. And I notice that my jaws will be flared and I'll be really crushing down, especially on the back part of my teeth where I'm grinding them, just trying to get something done. I mean, I, I'm not in any other distress. It's just I'm laser focused on something and I have uh, a lot of work that I'm doing. And I notice that I do apply a lot of pressure to my teeth like that. Is that a habit that I should probably look at into breaking? Yes, you should try and break it. And if you can't break it, that's when we intervene and we put in a little mouth guard. And sometimes just putting something in the mouth, as in a simple, thin piece of acrylic or plastic, you know, that gives you enough to realize when you bite down on, oh, I'm doing it. So it it's sort of almost like the shock therapy or the Pavlov dog thing. You know, it's giving you a warning sign. Oh, it's here. It's different. So those are waking guards. So it's not just for when you sleep or anything like that. These are actually little inserts that will go into your mouth. So when you're conscious and you're doing it, it just gives you like a little reminder. It helps give you a little reminder and it protects your teeth. Yes. And, you know, I make this and this is a good example. I have people when they get in traffic, you know, it's absolutely nerve wracking, particularly if you drive in the big cities where there's six lanes. So I always tell people if driving makes you extremely nervous and causes you to grit your teeth, put your mouth guard in while you're in that stressful situation. Now, this is something, honestly, that I should probably look into because you, you mentioned driving, and that, that's exactly me as well. If there's a, especially if it's um, like dusk and it's raining and there's a lot of traffic or something like that and the stress level is very high or snow on the road, I'm, I definitely, once again, bear down. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a ball of stress where I'm really clenching my teeth and trying to make sure I'm keeping the car on the road or whatever it may be. I, I may actually be a candidate for that because I, I definitely put a lot of stress on my mouth and my and my teeth when I when that happens to me. Well, you know, there's actually major medical codes for this. When I build an oral appliance for these conditions, there's a code called sleep bruxism. It's a major medical code, and major medical companies actually realize how important it is, and they cover this not on dental but from major medical. Yeah, uh, th- that makes. The way that you explained it, that actually makes a lot of sense. Whether it doesn't have to necessarily be on the on the dental side of things, that that does make a lot of sense. And I think that uh, we're we're discovering a lot this morning about how a lot of these interrelate. If you have any questions about uh, maybe some bad sleep habits, uh, TMJ, or with sleep apnea, you can give us a call. Our number is three four five fifty eight fifty eight on Ask the Expert. That's three four five fifty eight fifty eight. One thing I was interested in right from the outset when we started talking this morning, you started talking about ergonomics, and I'm not real sure. 
how that applies in this situation. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the education. Uh, what is ergonomics and uh, how is it a harmful or a bad ha- habit in what way? Well, ergonomics is the science of equipment. So a lot of employers, they always want to get the best ergonomics for their people to work with, especially if you're in front of a computer. You know, or, you know, if you work in a factory where you're lifting or twisting, the ergonomics is how to properly use the equipment and minimize the strain on your body, which would cause muscle spasms. This is actually a a pretty big industry. I had um, yet another guy that worked for me before temporarily, but he was still in school and he got hired away from my company. And what his job description was is he actually helped with assembly lines and with places like that, and this was in near Detroit, so there was a lot of manufacturing going on. But he actually helped with the development, so when you had workers that were working on a line, that the movements that they used were a lot more fluid and more natural rather than something that was jarring where you'd have, have to twist around for a large amount or reach very high or reach very low, everything in one level field. That was basically his primary job description was helping to design these areas. So I guess that's one of the reasons that a job like that exists is because employers do want to give as much as possible, a comfortable work environment when you're working with equipment or having to uh, implement it? Well, from my standpoint as a dentist where I'm treating TMD patients, you know, that's the pain in the head and the neck. You know, there's several patients that I've had a difficult time getting anywhere. So, you know, I treat and all of a sudden they're not getting better. And that's very disappointing to me as a practitioner because I have to look outside the box. One lady, I couldn't get her better, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, she let it slip. I sat in front of a computer for 11 hours a day. Oh, my. And, you know, when I ask her, where's your monitor? How are your arms? Your arms should be at a 90-degree angle, folks. Go back and look at your computer situation or where you are. And the eyes should be straight ahead. So her monitor was up. So as she was looking at her monitor 11 hours a day, she was kinking her head back, and that was causing all these muscle spasms. And after we moved the monitor down, have her keyboard at a nice 90-degree angle for her arms, all of a sudden she started getting better. Just from that that, uh, change in her lifestyle, just changing her environment with her computer and everything, allowed you to be able to do your job better. She actually started getting better after that point. Oh, absolutely. And then here's another example, and this is for parents to listen to because, you know, I went over it with my child this morning. I had to lift up his backpack. It weighed so much, I couldn't lift the backpack. So he's carrying this thing all day, and he's having back issues. So ergonomically, this is not working for him. So they kind of took a rolling backpacks away, which was bad for these children who have a lot of books. But it was really affecting his health because it weighs too much. I would imagine that things like this, um, not only does it overlap into your area of expertise, but I know for me, I, I, I produce a lot of shows. I'm, I'm uh, on a lot of shows here at the radio station, so I'm always in the control room. And there is a situation similar to that. We have computer monitors everywhere, keyboards everywhere. We're always busy and always rotating around in the chair and stuff. But I developed some uh, some lower back issues based off of that and also some, sh- some uh, shoulder-related issues like sh- stress headaches is basically um, – I started going to a chiropractor, and that's what they were talking about um, – but that's something that really affected me from, I guess, from an ergonomic standpoint then is the way that everything was set up. It was causing undue stress on my back. And I, it's, it's not a very uh, far jump to move from that into other areas that uh, would also overlap into your field where you're having problems and uh, you're unable to get better, just like you said. Yes, and I'm a prime example of that. I'm a cervical patient. You know, I have an occupation where I bend over eight hours a day And my neck's at a 90-degree angle looking at those patients. So actually now I can't do that. So my habit of 30 years caused cervical dysfunction in my neck. So if I would have only have known early on that if I had a microscope and looked straight out, then that would be a wonderful thing. So uh, what I want the take-home for everyone to be is look at what's going on around you. If these are habits you can change and that would keep you healthier, then wonderful. In a lot of situations, we can control our environment. It's as easy as moving a monitor or raising a keyboard or something along those lines. Uh, It's relatively simple fixes that could give us a lot of payoff in the long run if we just made these small changes in, in the way that we live sometimes. 
Yeah. Oh, I have another story. I had a lady that I just couldn't get better. You know, she's a TMJ, bad pain, couldn't get better. Well, I knew she worked for the postal system, and, you know, I kept trying and trying and trying. Well, it turned out that she was delivering mail, but she was sitting in the passenger side of the seat. And I'm, in the old days, that's the way they do it. So right. her left leg is going to the gas pedal on the brake, and her arm was going out left to the wheel, but she's sitting in the passenger side. So after we figured out, you know, she's reaching out to the right to put things in the mailbox, but she's driving to the left. So when we figured out just that small issue, then she started getting better. That hurts me just to think about, to be honest with you, having to, it seems almost contortionist to be able to have to reach like that. I, I would imagine that would put some stress on the body in that situation. But if I didn't ask, I would never know. Yeah. So th- there you go with listening again. I mean, your number one tool in your toolbox is being able to listen and, and gather the information before you can make a, uh, before you can make a diagnosis. A lot like Sherlock Holmes. You have to get all the information first before you can uh, properly uh, deduce your conclusions. It's time for us to go ahead and take another break. If you have any questions for us on Ask the Expert, we're talking to Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey. You can give us a call at 345-5858. That's 345-5858. You can find Dr. Bailey online, wvsmileartist.com. And her phone number is 304-757-7428. We're going to go ahead and take our break. We'll be back right after this on WCHS, the voice of Charleston. He's your authority on hunting and fishing. West Virginia Outdoors with Chris Lawrence, Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 on 58 WCHS. Sir, I came as quickly as I could. What is it? I need every new 2013 Hurricane Chevrolet cleared off this lot immediately. Sir... Are you saying that it's... Yes, it's Chevrolet clearance time. Payments starting at just $189 a month and up to 11000 off MSRP on trucks. It's a 2013 model year-end clearance. New Chevy starting from just $189 a month at Hurricane. Hurricane Chevrolet. Silverado was originally priced at $41,135, now just $31,35. That's $11,000 off MSRP. People, we have orders to sell off every new 2013 by Monday. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. New Chevrolets from just $189 a month. And trucks up to $11,000 off MSRP. Now that's clearance prices. So come on over to Hurricane. Hurricane Chevrolet. Halfway between Charleston and Huntington off I-64 at exit 34 in Hurricane. HurricaneChevrolet.com or call 1-800-NEW-CHEVY. That's 800-NEW-CHEVY. 2013 Sonic stock number 3742-2000 down for 72 months at 1.9% APR plus tax, tag, title, and fees. 2013 Silverado stock number 3934 MSRP 41135 to qualified buyers. Your eyesight is precious. Learn how to enhance it on Monday's Ask the Expert. Dr. Christopher Stansberry of West Virginia Eye Consultants at 501 Summer Street will be in the studio to discuss exciting advances in eyeglasses and contact lenses. Dr. Stansberry performs comprehensive eye exams and contact lens evaluations, as well as managing dry eye syndrome. He'll be taking your calls at 345-5858 during Monday's Ask the Expert, 9 a.m. on 58 WCHS. Highland Hospital recognizes that the beginning of a new school year can be an exciting yet stressful time for children. With new teachers and classmates, bigger classrooms, new routines, and more schoolwork, it can be particularly unnerving and overwhelming for children who are facing major transitions at school. Highland Hospital and our outpatient division process strategies. We understand these transitions. If your son or daughter needs behavior health treatment, please call us, 304-926-1600. Highland can help. This is Ted Cruz. There's bipartisan agreement that Obamacare isn't working. Democratic Senator Max Baucus, the lead author of Obamacare, said it's a huge train wreck. And Teamsters President James Hoffa said Obamacare will destroy the foundation of the 40-hour work week that is the backbone of the American middle class. And the president is quietly granting Obamacare waivers to big corporations. It's time for Congress to grant American families the same waiver President Obama has given giant corporations. The Constitution gives Congress the power of the purse. And we need Congress to stand up and defund Obamacare now. Please call 1-800-675-0106 to sign the official voice petition to defund Obamacare. Again, call 1-800-675-0106 to make your voice heard. Help us stop Obamacare before it's too late. Call 1-800-675-0106. Paid for by Senate Conservatives Fund and not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. SenateConservatives.com. 
Are you ready to ride? Hear the best tips for getting your motorcycle ready for riding season on Cycle Talk. Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. on 58 WCHS. Hosts Randy Dameron, Joe Tyree, Chuck Carpenter, and Brent Walker will have special guests. Give you the latest scoop on bikes and riding and more. And if you have a question, just email it to dotradio at wv.gov. And they'll answer it on the next show. Get in the thick of the action. Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Cycle Talk on 58 WCHS, the voice of Charles. Just a little less than 14 minutes until the top of the hour on a Friday. You're listening to WCHS, the voice of Charleston. This is Ask the Expert with Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey. You can find Dr. Bailey online at wvsmileartist.com. You can also give us a call this morning if you have any questions about your bad sleep habits, about sleep apnea, about TMJ disorder. You can give us a call. Our number here is 345-5858. You were talking a little bit after the break about um, uh, the situation with the backpack. And um, and I, I relayed a story to you that I thought was kind of interesting that I ran into that when I was in junior high. I had a friend of mine. He had bad posture and things anyway, so he always had problems with his back and his shoulders and stuff. But um, he was just, especially during the school year, was always complaining of uh, of uh, back problems and his lower back was just on one side. And this this happened for a lot of the time that I knew him, and he finally went to a doctor who simply told him to start using both straps of the backpack and to square it up on his back instead of just putting one strap over one shoulder where it would make him lean one way or the other. And it was almost like a miracle. I mean, within a few days, he started feeling better. So yeah. those are those are the situations that you have to you have to listen number one and uh, ask questions because that's not something that you would go to the doctor. You don't normally you wouldn't normally say. Well, you know, I carry around a backpack that weighs 50 pounds every day and I only put it on one shoulder. How would you know unless you ask that question? So you have to make sure that you're, that you're asking the right questions. We were talking about ergonomics a little bit before we went to the break. And I know that there's, there's uh, something that we wanted to talk about. Is there such a thing as bad sleep or ergonomics? Well, in sleep, we call it hygiene instead of ergonomics. So, Makes sense. Okay. You know, ergonomics would be in the workforce, but at home, sleep, you know, sleep is work for some people, but it's a different name. It's hygiene. So we're always looking at sleep hygiene pointers. What are, what are some of those pointers? What are you looking for there? Well, a lot of people consume caffeine, which affects your sleep, obviously. So at 2 o'clock in the evening, we always advise people, Cut the caffeine off. What? <laughs> I know that that's good advice. As I'm getting older, I'm trying to get closer to that 2 o'clock. I'm at, at about 5 o'clock now. It used to be I would drink coffee all the way until, you know, way into the nighttime. I'm at 5 o'clock now. I, I usually have my last cup at about 4.30, finish it at about 5. So you're saying I need to go back a few more hours. 2 o'clock would probably be idea for me. Well, if you're having problems sleeping, if you're an insomniac or you wake up frequently or you have to get up and frequently urinate, then that's something that may not be good for you. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. There has been occasions where that's happened. What, what else do you look for other than uh, than caffeine consumption? Um, here's a good example. My best friend, uh, Becky, what Becky does is she sleeps with her dog. Well, her dog has a bladder problem. Oh, boy. So she has to get up every couple of hours and go let the dog out. So I would say, Becky, honey, you're not getting good quality sleep because you have to get up every two hours because of the dog. So I really have to watch talking to pet owners because, you know, everybody loves their pet, and I love my pet as well. You know, I, so sometimes pets snore, but they are disrupting you, and they always recommend that you don't have your pet in your bedroom. Oh boy. Well, let me tell you my situation a little bit about this very, very briefly because this, this has caused me a lot of problems. Uh, recently, um, I have a cat that, um, that has issues with, uh, suddenly, ever since I moved, I remodeled a house. My wife and I moved into it. Ever since we moved, my cat's developed an issue where, uh, she has to eat like every two or three hours and she will sit outside the bedroom door and just sing her heart out until we get up and feed her. That's definitely a bad sleep hygiene situation because i mean obviously it's waking us up every two or three hours and then uh on top of that we have a dog who will decide to uh yeah she wants to get in bed with us every once in a while and she's a big dog so she'll get in there just spread out completely and she snores like fred flintstone i think and that's another situation that that definitely causes some uh some uh, bad sleep hygiene i think for me that's probably a situation i should look at uh going forward especially if i have uh, sleep problems 
Yeah, and it doesn't always affect everyone, but if you are one of those special people that has sleep apnea or difficulty sleeping, you know, these are just little suggestions, and sometimes it's hard to give up those pets. It's hard to give up the thing that you love, but if it's disrupting your quality of life and shortening your life expectancy, taking care of the loved, then you need to look at it. You know, and another thing that you need to look at is we sleep with a lot of stuff on, like the TV on. I can't sleep, so I leave the TV on, or the radio, or... So people need to realize that in sleep hygiene, you're supposed to turn the TV off when you go to bed. (laughs) Is it a bad sign that half the time I wake up uh, at uh, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning with my tablet on my chest? (laughs) (laughs) And 2 o'clock is the magic hour for people to wake up, and there's a reason for that. There's a hormone shift. It's called the circadian rhythm. So at 1 or 2 o'clock, classically, that's when people wake up because that's when the body's hormones are changing. So that that is – I've actually heard of that before, but I didn't know that it was an actually proven thing. That is an actual thing where your rhythms change during the course of the night? Absolutely. And 2 o'clock is the most – typical time for that that's the typical time for it and you know the body is designed to protect itself so we should be turning every 90 minutes while you're asleep the body has like a little alarm clock going off and you sleep through it hopefully but if you lay on one side all the time all the fluid pulls on that side so the body knows this so the body every 90 minutes is kind of telling you roll over so that the sinuses, you know how fluid gets on one side of your sinus where you roll over and it rolls to the other side, you breathe better. So the body knows what to do to stay alive, and that's one of the things that it will do. That's a, I didn't know that either. So that, that's a great – what about sleeping on your back, though? Is that uh, – I've heard before that, that that may not be the best thing for you. I, I know that I definitely have that internal clock where I'm – I'm not a restless sleeper, but I know that I definitely change positions several times during the night. But I'm afraid that probably a third of that time spent on my back a lot. Well, in my sleep apnea patients, you know, the tongue is falling in the back of the throat. And we have gravity pulling against you when you are on your back. So with sleep apnea patients in the sleep hygiene, we advise people don't sleep on your back. And I always say back is death for some of my patients because that's the only position they have an apnea event. And I guess that you can kind of tell that it's not necessarily that great for you because that's where your your worst snoring happens usually, too, if you're sleeping on your back. A lot of times if I wake myself up snoring, um, as long as I move to one side or the other, if I sleep on one side or the other, it seems to alleviate the issue. What about things like um, uh, your mattress quality, height of your pillows and things along those lines? Does that also play a part in sleep hygiene? Um, yes, and I have kind of a funny story, uh, cleaning your room. You know, getting the dust out because my daughter this morning, we had a little discussion on being a prudent person on cleaning the room. Uh, If there's a lot of dust in there or dust under the bed, that will affect the quality of your sleep, your sleep hygiene. So dust under the bed. The other thing is good mattress. Every seven years you change your mattress. So the people out there marketing mattresses, they love me because I'm always, (laughs) you know, promoting that. Um, Sometimes elevating your bed. You know, put a two before under the head. Get that 15-degree elevation, especially if you have acid reflux. That's very helpful, and it's a very simple thing to fix. So slightly uh, having the head of your bed inclined could possibly help you if you have acid reflux? Oh, absolutely. It takes the weight off. You know, when you're laying flat of your back, you have to think about gravity again. It's pulling up and pushing on your lungs. So if you elevate the bed ever so slightly, that 15 degrees, then that pulls the weight downward. And and your uh, expert opinion, is there anything to the the supposedly idea-shaped pillows? You know, you can you can get the ones that have like kind of the concave shape to it, made of a special material that's supposed to help you sleep and sleep in a more healthy posture and everything. Is that true? Um, yes, but you know, that's an individual preference for a lot of people. If you have cervical dysfunction, like there's only one type of pillow I can sleep on because of my neck dysfunction. Um, some people, they love the down thing. Uh, it just all depends on the person's preference. What's working for you, keep on. So that's that's the bottom line. Whatever works for you, that's fine. There's not going to be one answer for everyone. So necessarily, if you see the commercials or whatever it may be, you want to test it out first before you before you uh, you make that decision. We do need to take one more break, and when we come back, we want to talk about what you think is the worst 
the worst habits that you can have. And so I want to get your opinion on that when we come back. We're going to talk about that when we come back on Ask the Expert. You're listening to Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey on WCHS, the voice of Charleston. You can find her online at wvsmileartist.com. Phone number is 757-7428-304-757-7428. We'll be back right after this on WCHS. The experience, the professionalism, the attention to detail you can depend on. The voice of Charleston is 58 WCHS. At Quicken Loans, we close many of our home loans in 30 days or less. But if you work with someone other than Quicken Loans, you might be dealing with a lender that takes a lot longer. Here's an analogy. I ordered a pizza four hours ago that should have arrived in 30 minutes or less. Think of my cold, unappetizing pizza as a mortgage from a lender that doesn't care about closing loans quickly. Here's your pizza, dude. You should have been here a lot sooner. Who do you think I am? Quick and loans? The choice is clear. A mortgage from a lender that takes forever to close your loan or a piping hot mortgage from Quick and Loans that arrives fresh at your door in as quick as 30 days or less. One more way Quick and Loans is engineered to amaze. The rate today on a 30-year fixed mortgage is an incredible 3.99%. APR 4.22%. Call Quicken Loans today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN or go to quickenloans.com. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. Nationwide licensing number 3030. Three minutes until 10 o'clock. You're listening to Ask the Expert WCHS, the voice of Charleston. This is Dale Cooper. Dr. Jeannie K. Bailey is our expert this morning. We've been talking about some of your bad habits, some of my bad habits, uh, just bad habits in general, how it affects sleep and relates to sleep apnea and, and TMJ. I did want to get your opinion. We've talked about all these different bad habits and uh, indicators. What's probably the top thing in your in your mind? What's the what's the worst uh, either habit or or um, effect that you could have that uh, in your opinion? Stress. Stress. I would. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, what is so bad about stress? I mean, uh, from from your perspective as as a physician, what's so bad about stress? Well, if it's a pain patient and they're clenching their teeth, you know, I have to figure out a way to kind of cut that off so the muscles aren't spasm. So stress is a really big one in that aspect. Plus, people who have stress, they have a different body chemistry. The pain receptors kick into high gear. So they're in more perceived pain than you or I who are not in a stressful situation. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Are there ways that you can control stress or what ways that you recommend for your patients to be able to control, control their stress? Absolutely. The best thing to do is recognize what are your stressors, you know, Let me give you an example. Um, If children come in and they stress me out, I have to know what can I do to shut that off? Because I have two teenagers, folks. I have a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old, and they're both driving. So I did find if I sit in the back seat, you know, I don't worry quite as much. Really? I don't see what's going on. It's a good thing. So you just have to identify whatever stressors may be in your life and make a concentrated effort to try and minimize that or reduce it. So here's some homework that maybe you should do at home. I'm thinking about doing this today as well. Try to write down some of the situations and the events that, uh, that make you stressed and uh, see if there's some way that you can treat those. Because sometimes there's ways if you actually have it in black and white where you write it out, you're like, okay, this causes me stress. And if you think about it for a minute, there might be ways that you can alleviate that from your life. Yes, there's just always good, simple tools that you can help get a healthier lifestyle like sitting in the back seat it might help out dr Jeannie k bailey has been our expert this morning on ask the expert thank you so much for being in dr bailey oh and thank you and i did want to say hi to judy judy thank you for listening to my show (laughs) that's outstanding you've been listening to ask the expert on a friday coming up next is going to be talk line with hobby kirchival a note for reds fans the reds are going to be on our sister station espn tonight 104.5 and 1490 and they'll be taking on the pirates that's an important game this is wchs charleston have a great day, everyone.